Hello. Hey, Sammies. Guess what we're doing? A live show. It's our first live show. We're taking this on the road, bitches. Boop, 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 boop. So we have our first live show in Long Beach, California on August 4th, which is a Sunday at 7 p.m. It's going to be a little unofficial after party of Midsummer Scream. So if you're going there, be sure to hit up our show when it's over. Woohoo! It's going to be at, what's it called again, Bernsey? Pulp Fiction Books and Comics. That's 1742 Clark Avenue, Long Beach. Free show. Free beer. Giveaways. giveaways. Yeah, Maybe we- some other cool shit. We're fucking making it happen, Sammy. Yeah, man. It's going to be kind of as much as a, of a surprise to you as it will be to us. So <laughs> woohoo! Let's see how this goes. We'll see you there. What's your favorite scary movie? Oh, come on. You know I don't watch that shit. Why not? Too scared? No. No, it's just what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. Hello. Hello. Hey, 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 hey. And welcome to episode forties nines. Yeah. I think it's no, maybe I don't know. Who knows? Forties nines. Forties nines. Forties nines. Zers. <laughs> um. Hi, everybody. This is Kim and Cut. Stay alive. Maybe. We uh, are a horror movie, horror movie comedy podcast, and uh, we're going to tell you a whole movie. Well, Kim's going to tell you a whole movie today, and I'm going to try to stay alive in it. Good luck. Would you like to follow along? Please do. All right. How are you? I'm What's good. Up? Oh, cheers. Cheers. What are we drinking? We're drinking <clears throat> whiskey and ginger. Whiskey and ginger. I love me some whiskey and ginger. China hauls out. Tits up. I got to make a t-shirt that says that. What will the picture be on that? Uh, my vagina. Oh. And your tits. And my tits. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Yep. <laughs> Who wants one? <laughs> <laughs> Just my open flowering <laughs> vagina. <laughs> Sold to uh, <laughs> no one. <laughs> and hopefully <laughs> or, or not i realize <laughs> or all the people and then i'm scared <laughs> however here's my problem that i just thought of it like that is in direct reference to uh uh, uh it was emily right emily? where it said china hole but we're not sure if he was saying gina hole as in vagina correct china hole china holes out tits up could be perceived as something slightly racist. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? So maybe we need to start saying gina, gina holes. holes. I'm I'm done with that. T-shirt that says gina, gina holes. holes out tits up. Okay. I love it. Made a little made a little course correction in real time, Sammy's. That's what you can come to expect us working shit out <laughs> while we in record. Front of you. <laughs> Always keeping it real. Yep. So, uh, um, anything have, else? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Do we have any business? I don't have any. I don't either. Did when you watch this movie? come out? Oh my June god! Something? I don't when even does this know. Come out. Let's find out. Let's also work this out while we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we don't ta- we don't talk to each other unless we're recording it. <laughs> Like anything that needs to be discussed is happening in front of you guys. That's I'm gonna all there say is July to 10th is today, maybe. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I just wanted to say that we're going to Midsummer Scream. Should we say that? Yeah, we should. We're going to Midsummer Scream. We're gonna be there, and <laughs> on uh, the Saturday. Yeah. And uh, so, if you want to come see us, I think we're definitely, definitely, maybe, uh, doing a spot on someone else's podcast. But I'll let you know when we have more details tells about that because i'm not sure or sure and then also maybe definitely having our first live show yeah our hesitancy is not our desire to do a show we are so excited we are so stoked it's just a matter of working out the logistics so as you listen to this episode you may hear some (laughs) mini so there'll probably be more information yeah there'll be more Uh. information when we have more information because Catherine's going out of town so we're filming a little in advance recording a little in advance yeah um but 
that's why we don't really know what day it is. But we're hoping when we for are. live show at Midsummer. So. Yeah, that'll be so or like fucking fun. in Long Beach that weekend. Yeah. Also, Art the Clown, come hang out with us since we're best friends now. Which is he's like the nicest guy. He's very it. nice. It's he is so fun. Um. Anyway, I'm uh, on our team politically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. He's very much politically in our in our arena <laughs> thank god um did you know that art the clown was a democrat cool <laughs> soups liberal yeah. <laughs> yeah he's real liberal art the clown yep soups yep soups liberal S- so proud to have him on our team <laughs> <laughs> ah shit okay so so sammy's i have my phone on if you hear some dinglings we'll try to edit it out but if it happens while well, kim is just yap yap yapping <laughs> I won't be able to. Just didn't want you to think I was being rude. Yes, correct. Anything else? I don't think so. I just want to hear about your fucking movie. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. I feel like I say this all the time, but I was busy again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kim's got a life, you guys. I considered... Uh, I've got a lot of... A lot of sh- ships in the air. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you write that down right the fuck now? Why? I've got a lot of ships in the air. I do. Ships trying to in keep the air. Them sailing in Through. the wind. <laughs> That's what ships I'm doing. Ships on the water. Uh-huh. Okay. You know what? New t-shirt, everybody. <laughs> T-shirts are being created left and right. You in get a this t-shirt. Episode. You get a t-shirt. You get a t-shirt. <laughs> oh god, that's so amazing. Yeah, I just got a lot of jobs, and I'm an entrepreneur trying to create some shit yep. for the world. So, yep. anyway, uh, I was yet again going to attempt to watch that one movie that I've watched 15 minutes of, right? But then again, got to the very last minute because it's one that I'm really scared of. I know. I really want to so know what it is. It was, <laughs> Catherine still doesn't know what it is. <laughs> uh, it was 11 p.m. last night. Girl. When I started watching a movie, when I was ready and able to start watching a movie. And I was like, I just, I'll be so scared. I'll be so scared. And then I, and then I, and then I won't be able to sleep. And, then you won't and be able I need to, sleep. to like get up and do this all day. So, so we do know that it's really fun when you're underslept. On well, these episodes. I'm still underslept, still underslept, but I would have like, I already knew that I was like not going to get my full eight hours, sure, but sure. I was like, I knew when I laid my head down after watching that it would be no sleep at all. Literally no sleep till Brooklyn. For sure. So. I picked a different one. <laughs> okay. Great. And uh, this is it. I would like to hear about it right now. It is called Unsane. Unsane. Ooh, like me. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I'm not insane, but I'm not sane either. You're I'm unsane. unsane. I would agree with that. Yeah. So I actually, I was, this has been on my list, but then I was like, is that really a horror movie? And then I Googled, oh. is Unsane a horror movie? Because a lot of things come up more as like thriller and suspenseful. I have that exact same mm-hmm. problem. And it's like, some people will say, yes, this is definitely a horror. And then other people are like, absolutely not at all. I, I hear you. Well, I Googled that. And then there was a res- very specific response that I'm going to tell you. Remind me to tell you at the end of the movie. Because I the don't want to tell you now. And I, but once I read that, I was like, okay. All right. Oh my I gosh. will I'm try intrigued. it. So this is a Steven Soderbergh movie. Okay. Fun fact. It was shot on an iPhone. What? Yeah. The whole thing. That's neat. Yeah. So, okay. Um, Dead or Alive. Okay. Sawyer Valentini. Boy or girl? Girl. Played by Claire Foy. Claire Foy. I thought so. Alive. Um, David Strine. Alive. George Shaw. Dead. Jill. Dead. Mom. Alive. Nurse Balls. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry? I'm sorry? (laughs) Isn't it funny that I... <laughs> Is her name really Nurse Balls? <laughs> no. I call her Nurse Balls the whole time because the first time I heard her name, it sounded like Nurse Balls, and I was like, that's her name. 
Um, but her name is Nurse Bowles, and I meant to. Ch- I wrote down Nurse Balls, but I meant to change it to Nurse Bowles. No, it's, it's in the thing, and then it, I panicked the second it came out, and my, then I was like Nurse Bowles. <laughs> No, it's it's only nurse balls from here on out. And you know that uh, she's alive and loving life. <laughs> uh, Braids slash Violet. Dead. King Nate. Dead. Dr. Hawthorne. D- alive. Alive. I'm sorry? D- uh, alive. Is that your final answer? Yes. So. It's black screen. We hear some crickets chirping. Okay. <laughs> Birds were chopping, crickets were chirping. <laughs> we start to hear the voiceover of a dude, and then we start to see woods that are kind of in like a bluish light. Okay. A little bit. And the voiceover says, I love it when you wear blue. Mm. That's what you were wearing the first time I saw you. You unlock something inside me, <gasps> and nothing's going to be the same. You did that. Cut to a city street. Claire is walking down the street looking professional and we're seeing her kind of almost like through the bushes and trees a little bit. Okay. Like we're in the tree maybe and like watching her walk down the street and uh, cut to Claire being at work like in um one of those offices that has like the different little cubicles. squares around cubicles. Yep. And... Um, <laughs> she's on the phone and she's like, this is my job. I analyze data. Uh, if you have a problem with it, don't take it out on me. You can go somewhere else and see if they analyze it. But if they tell you a different answer, they'd be wrong. Ooh, and she hangs queen. up. Damn. Is she speaking with a British accent? She's not. Okay. Interesting. Just wanted to. Jill. Yep. Her next door cubicle neighbor. Uh huh. Looks over and smiles. And her Claire's like. Cuba, her Cuba neighbor. Cuba neighbor is like, and she's like, what? And, Cl- and Judy's like, nothing. Jill or Judy? Oh, because Judy's in summer camp. I was like, why do I keep calling her Judy? Jill. Oh, okay. And she's like, nothing. And and Jill's just like, hope he likes vinegar more than honey. Ooh. And Claire Girl? just says, she. <gasps> oh. And Jill's like, okay, well then. And like turns away. Then Claire like kind of looks over and she like pops out of like, like slides her little chair back because she sees like a guy kind of walking down like another part of the office but mm-hmm. we just see the back of him okay um and it's like a brunette kind of bearded guy um she gets up and then goes into the office with we, who we assume is like her boss and claire does claire okay and the boss is like saying that she's like doing a really great job and she's gonna do well here um you know, uh, basically seeming like it's new, mm-hmm. but she's doing great. And he's like, oh, there's like the so-and-so conference in New Orleans. We should go. You should go. And Claire's like, I think I need more experience for that. And the boss is like, I mean, I can help you with that. <gasps> with with my penis. Uh-huh. And Claire's like, I should go back to work <gasps> and leaves. Okay. Is he cute? No. Oh, okay. It was creepy. Oh, uh, Okay. Thank you. I'm glad I asked. It was I, creepy and sexual harassy where she was like, um, I'm going to go. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Please stop inviting me to a conference. Got it. Creep face. <laughs> so uh, now she's outside um, eating lunch and she's like FaceTiming with her mom and talking to her mom about like how well of all her friends like Jill's probably the closest like we go out for drinks and she's like yeah my boss is great I mean he's like demanding but like when he tells you he's doing a good job you know he means it she's like I'm happy and her mom is like well I sure hope so because you moved 450 miles away from me and everyone you know oh my god chill mom and Claire's like well it's a great opportunity and she's like you know I'm impulsive so she's saying she kind of came for like the job yeah and uh, again we're kind of like see we're watching her from like the afar bushes. a little bit okay. and now it's nighttime she's going into a bar and she's sitting at the bar and like swiping on tinder and she matches with a guy that and then she like looks up and he's like in the bar so what? i guess it was like a locate or whatever it was oh, like a location oh, yeah, thing yeah, yeah. okay she like looks over he's sitting at the end of the bar he like waves and comes over they start doing shots and he asks and so He's like Sawyer Valentini, like that's her name, and he's I love like that name. great name. Uh, 
great you agree you agree and he's like sexy name and she's like yeah i mean i was named after my grandpa he died of eye cancer so you know and then she starts laughing and he's and he's like okay and she's like i mean if we can't laugh at cancer who are we and he's like that's kind of dark and she's like hail satan (laughs) um i love her i want to be best friends with her immediately (laughs) she's like look jesse and he's like it's mark (laughs) (laughs) this bitch is my spirit animal she's like mark (laughs) tonight's gonna go how you want it to go there's no question about that just promising one thing you won't call me again. You will not contact me again. And please don't ever pretend that we met. I love. And then they kiss. I love her. <laughs> I mean, that's not how I roll, but I respect people who just say what they want. For sure. So now they're in the, her, they walk into her apartment and they're like, ma- they start making out in the hallway and she kind of stops and is like, fuck, fuck. And kind of like, pushes him away and like throws herself kind of across the like onto the floor across the room and he's like i thought this is what you wanted you initiated uh fuck and sawyer's just like no and runs into the bathroom and shuts the door so he leaves shit and she gets up and like just takes a pill (gasps) cut to her later she's in her bed googling support group for victims of stalking what and she finds this thing called highland creek behavioral center cut to her driving and then we start to hear um her answering questions and she's like you know life just starts to slip away and different things start to become normal like changing your number becomes normal changing your lunch spot becomes normal restraining orders become normal relocating to new cities becomes normal wow And we see she's like sitting and talking with a counselor and she's like lately and they're talking about how she's like, I still see the lady's like, so you still see your stalker everywhere. Mm. And Claire is like, rationally, I know it's like my neuroses mixed with my imagination, like manifesting my worst fears. Mm -hmm. But she's like, I'm alone in a new city and it's strange. And she's like, I never feel safe. Ugh. Yeah. That sounds awful. I know. And the lady's like, well, have you had, are you having like, s-? she's talking about never feeling safe and kind of getting depressed, et cetera. And the lady's like, do you have suicidal thoughts? And um, Sawyer's like, I mean, I have in the past. Mm-hmm. And the lady's like, well, how would you do it? Or how do you think about doing it? And Sawyer's like, do you know about the therapeutic index? which I feel like you would find super interesting because yes, I didn't please. go further down into it, but it's oh. something about the ra- the, 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 the ratio of the measurement between blood um, concentration for drugs. Like they test the amount oh, okay. of concentration of drug compared to the blood ratio. Oh, okay. So it would be like, how- correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe we'll do this in a postmortem, but I like- think it should be a postmortem because I, I don't know the answer. If I can't correct you. Okay. If you're wrong or right. Okay. Yeah. But basically, it's testing drugs. Okay. Got it. So to me, it would be like how much of a drug in comparison to how much blood there is does it something like that? Yeah. Yeah. I sound like like a a fucking doctor. Exactly. You're you're a scientist, and you are right. I know. I can't correct you (laughs) because you are not wrong. Yep. It's true. Yeah. You're a professional doctor scientist. Let's do that in a postmortem. So yeah, she's like testing drugs. That would be my final hours. And so then the counselor is like, okay, well, fill out these forms. It's just like basic stuff, da 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 da, and we'll discuss treatment options. So now Sawyer is kind of sitting in the front desk area, and and this um, is present day, correct? This is totally no reason to think this is a nope. flashback. Okay, hundred percent, got it. Present. So uh, she brings fills out all our forms brings it to the front desk lady and she's like yeah i just want to set up an appointment um for next week and the front desk lady's like okay have a seat and uh sawyer's like i mean can we just set that up because i need to get back to work okay and then um a man nurse comes for her who i called Merce, <laughs> <laughs> which i actually saw someone on a dating app the other a day nurse. i love it <laughs> his like job description was Merce, and i was like I kind of love you for that. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's amazing. <laughs> so a nurse comes for her and is like, oh, come with me. And she's like, okay, but I, I need to get back to work. And he starts like taking her down the hallway and they're like passing by like patient rooms. And he brings her into a room that looks like a doctor's office room. Okay. Like where like has one of the beds that you would like kind of lay on and stuff. Sure. And he is like, can I check your bag? And she's, he's like, don't worry. It's just procedure. I do this with everyone. It's not specific to you. He starts looking through her bag and like pulls out things like her phone and other things and starts putting them inside a plastic bag. What? And then takes all of it and just walks out. And she's like, what are you doing? And as he's walking out, nurse balls comes in balls (laughs) (laughs) and like shuts the door. What the fuck? And she's like, I need you to strip down to your underwear. What? No, thank you. She's like, I need to check for identifying marks, et cetera, et cetera. And Sawyer's like, what? And she like tries to leave and the door is locked. Oh, shit. And Sawyer's like, the door is locked. And the nurse says, oh, it's for privacy. Take your clothes off. What the fuck? And Sawyer's like, there's nothing wrong with me. I just needed to talk to someone. What? I'm so freaked out. And nurse boys, bulls is like, it's better for everyone if you do as I ask. Oh, question number one. Do you and does she? Does as she asks. Uh, So she took my phone. Mm -hmm. I'll say what I'm going to do first. I don't have anything on me and the door is locked. So I feel like this is an instance where I probably will end up taking my clothes off. Mm hmm. Um, but what I would say is I'm happy to do that. I just need a little bit more explanation. I'm sure you can understand why this would be an uncomfortable thing for me. And I really want to help, help you as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Like I would definitely play that sort of reverse psychology of like not escalating the situation. Right. Because I feel like if I argue more, it's going to escalate the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd probably end up taking my clothes off. Just because, again, not trying to escalate things. And I feel, is this a woman? It is a woman. I feel pretty confident in like my ability to physically defend myself should it come to that. But I would be trying to have it not come to that. Um, But I would keep my clothes sort of behind me. Like I wouldn't let her take my clothes. If she Mm -hmm. tried to take them, that would be an issue. Um, What does she do? Uh... I don't think she takes her clothes off. I don't think she does. I'm so sorry. I'm going to give you zero points. Fair enough. Uh, She does take her clothes off. Okay. And the nurse is checking her out and gives her a hospital gown. And she's like, put this on. And Sawyer's like, can I go? I need to go to work. To work. Yeah. (laughs) And the nurse is like, here. At at this point, like Sawyer's like, I need to go. I need to go to work. Like, I don't want to put this hospital gown on. Yeah. And the nurse is like, you're upset. Here, take these. And gives her some pills. And Sawyer's like, and then can I go? Whoa. And the nurse says, you'll feel better. I would absolutely not take those. Well, great. That's question number two. I would absolutely not take those at all. I am. And does she? Does she? So nurse Bowles, Ball's exact words were, take these you'll feel better something along those lines like she's like you're upset here but like she's being nice basically Uh, nice ish she's a stern lady okay there's no part of me that would ever describe her as nice i think she's not like being aggressive yeah can i slightly change mine i think we both take it but hide it try to hide it under our tongue don't swallow it actually you don't hide it under your tongue you hide it like back behind your back molar because if they make you show it Show under your tongue, they'll be able to see it. Oh. <laughs> the saddest so thing. And I just woke the dog up. I'm sorry, baby. Um, I'm going to give you a point for you. Okay. Because I feel like then you're like moving it along, but not taking whatever the fuck they're giving you. Right. I, I would have given you a point for not taking it as well. Right. I just feel like that's going to like, if she's got an attitude, me not taking it's going to escalate things. So I'm going to take it, but hide it behind my back molar. Uh, I already said that. She yeah. takes the pills. Okay. And now the nurse takes her. And fucking her- swallows them. She just swallows them? Yeah. Okay. And wow. now the nurse takes her down the hall to an inpatient ward. Shit. She's like on her fucking lunch break. I- Girl, this is why I go to Starbucks on my lunch break. 
This is crazy. This is crazy. And I don't have my phone. <sighs> and Eric doesn't even know that I'm missing yet because I'm just on my lunch break. No one knows Fuck. anything. So the she brings her into the ward and Nurse Ball says, signing this consent was uh, you just sign this paperwork is a signed consent to voluntary commitment for 24 hours. N- no. And so he was like, the counselor said it was like routine forms. And the nurse is like, well, you signed it. What the fuck? <laughs> so now Sawyer tries to do the thing that you were saying of like trying to kind of butter her up and like right. be sweet where she's yeah. like, I mean, okay, like that makes total sense, but do you think I could maybe just like make a phone call? And the nurse is like, that's allowed. You get one phone call. And Sawyer's just still being really sweet. And she's Mm -hmm. like, great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And they go to the phone. Who are you going to call? Question three. And who does she call? Um, Well, I'm, I'm going to call Eric for sure. Uh, but I, and I only get one phone call. She said I only get one. Yeah, but you're her. So she doesn't have an Eric. Oh, no, I was answering for me. Who am I going to call? Yeah, but you don't have an Eric. Okay. In this scenario. Uh, Then I'm going to... Interesting. You're out. Yeah. So I just had an idea. Trying to fuck strangers. And then I had another idea. I'm going to call my mom Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna get weird here does she call no I think I think we both call our mom I was about to get weird but I think we both call our mom (laughs) Oh, poor Rosie. <laughs> That's going to keep happening, baby. Um, what was your weird thought? I want to hear it. <laughs> calling calling the dude from the, uh, the uh, dating app. I don't think they exchanged phone numbers. I, I realized that as I was thinking about it, that I was like, they matched on an app, and then she doesn't have her phone, and then they would she, why would she know his number? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to give you a point for you. Okay. Who um, does she fucking call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> the her job? The police. The police. Hmm. So she's about like, thank you so much. I so appreciate this. And she picks up the phone and um she's like, I am being held under my you need to come get me. Like being held under my will. See, that and- just to me, she sounds nuts. And the police would go, You're calling from an an institution you're nuts well the nurse then says do you know how many calls the cops get like that every week from here right yeah and she's like yeah but those are from crazy people and then the nurse just like taking notes of yeah. everything fuck <laughs> do you and have she's a, ther- like, Let's do you go have back a therapist the that writes notes um my therapist didn't mine doesn't either which i always like i'm just like how do you remember everything so well <laughs> Well, I realize they immediately take notes afterwards. Prob- I'm assuming. Yeah. But- well, I realized that like if I was a therapist, I would 100 percent take notes because I want to remember things to say without cutting the other person off. Mm-hmm. But I also know that when I've had therapists before that do take notes, yeah. it really puts me on edge. You're like, what are you writing? That's exactly what it is. Whereas, <laughs> what like, are you saying about me? I know that I'd be writing what I'd be writing and yeah. what I'd be writing is like, reminding myself to say right. this but i'm immediately defensive i actually just thought it was like hella impressive how much my therapist did not take notes yeah and then would be like well if you remember um five years ago when we <laughs> talked about the la, 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 and i'm like how do you remember five years ago when That's, we talked about that yeah she's like this re-, like she would constantly relate current things to like something from the past yeah like she was so fucking That's on top amazing. of it right yeah, it's just must like take you're amazing afterwards. and there must be something that like they're like don't take notes because i feel like i don't know of anyone whose therapist takes notes that's why i was asking oh yeah maybe but it's like what you see in the movies and it's it so is just a movie thing yeah i mean i've had therapists in the past who have taken notes mm. 
and it makes me really uncomfortable. Yeah, I think it would probably make me uncomfortable. So anyway, Nurse Bowles is like, let's go back to the ward. Yeah. It's nighttime now. The ward is like just a big open room with a bunch of beds all around the with wall. A bunch of beds? Fuck. So okay. there's other people in there. Ugh. Okay. And it's like this like inpatient ward of just a big fucking open room. Oh my God. Can you imagine having to s- sleep in a big open room of s- fucking strangers? Mm-hmm. So here's what it's like. I hate this. There's a chick next to her with really like a bunch of braids. Um, So she is henceforth known as braids. Mm-hmm. Um, And this chick says to Sawyer, Allison, how's your baby? Allison, hey. Talking Sawyer just ignores Sawyer. her. Okay. 100%. All right. Sorry, sorry, just ignores her. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm going to go check on that real quick. Sammy's, if we don't come back, <laughs> but somehow this episode is released, please know that about three weeks ago, Kim and I were murdered. <laughs> Be right back. <laughs> There's a weird, weird knocking coming from the outside slow knocking this is exactly what we would tell a character not Not to do do. don't go look ignore it it's a murderer so anyway uh we're alive and chick next door bed next door is keeps being like allison hey and sawyer is ignoring her and then that chick braids reaches inside her pants (laughs) And throw something at Sawyer. Uh, Question number four. What is it? A baby. No, I'm just kidding. A a baby? A baby. Your eyes? I made a joke, but then your eyes. (laughs) (laughs) What does she throw at her? Oh, my God. I hope it's not poop. Um, Throw something at her. She says, how's your baby to her? She says, Allison, how's your baby? Yeah. But then she throws something from her pantaloons. Mm-hmm. Is it something babies like? <laughs> Is it a rattle? Does she have a pants rattle? Um, let's see. Is it something I should know? Or am I just blind guessing? Oh, no. It's, it's guessable for sure. Okay. Uh, is... I'm going to go with... And th- she throws it at her. Yes. Angrily. Because she's ignoring her. Because she's ignoring her. Oh, my God. Is it her fucking tampon? Is it? Yes. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer. She Dude. A fucking tampon. That is a at her. bummer to get a tampon thrown at you. Now, and Braids is all like, Allison, you too good to talk to me now? Oh, my God. And Sawyer's like, my name's not Allison, but yeah, I am too good to talk to you. (laughs) Yes, bitch. And then fucking Braids flips out and she's like, bitch, you fall asleep. I'm going to cut your hair off. And Sawyer's is like, with what? Like, is anyone giving you anything sharp? Yeah. And Braids like stands up and she lifts up her shirt and like inside or like taped kind of to the side, like to her side uh-huh. is like a little metal like shiv kind of oh, thing. Fuck. This bitch is real. <laughs> Shit. And Sawyer's so just like, great, great. That's great. I'll, I'll be thinking about you when I'm home. Okay. Because something it's like the cops are coming yeah i'm not fucking like saying here. like you know? this is all a mistake i'll be out of here in two seconds you're actually crazy and she's like whatever i'll be thinking about you you mental patient <gasps> and then a guy from across the room and i was like wait this is a co-ed, co-ed? yeah apparently yes jesus christ it's a co-ed inpatient mental ward that really concerns me I, me too yeah i was like the fuck I mean, I'm genuinely concerned by, like, mental patients of any gender sharing space together. But specifically, yeah, that's rough. Okay. So Sawyer and Braids are in beds next to each other. And directly across from Sawyer is this dude. And he's like, calling her a mental patient isn't helpful. He's like, we need to support each other. Hmm. And Sawyer's like, I shouldn't be here. Yeah. The cops are on their way. And the dude is like, 
oh really and everyone kind of starts to giggle a little oh, bit oh man next scene the cops they do come oh they're hey. at the front desk okay hello hi how are you cops? these cops and the front desk lady clearly know each other mr officer and i shouldn't be here the lady is like here's her admission form etc cetera, etc cetera. they talk about coffee jokey jokes steve and steve's partner she likes steve she does not like steve's partner uh, sure sure clearly does, they come honestly, fucking steve's partner is what a the worst dick. yeah so clearly they come all the time mm-hmm. they have to come and check it out right but it's always nonsense well i mean she shines she shines the admission form <laughs> <laughs> she shines the she shines she admission form yeah no okay got you back to the ward this is why you got to read what you sign exactly every single time you update itunes are you reading that entire 12 page thing i am are you yeah i'm showing it to my lawyer every time good for you (laughs) really on top of it what if i did that (laughs) then i'd be committed paying (laughs) uh you're just paying your lawyer every day to be like can you read all the things i hit accept on yeah oh my god they really should have like a cliff notes for that. Just be like, have like a super cool, cool lawyer. That's just like, hey, here's the cliff note on everything they're hitting except for. Yep. That, that's so true. Because I was that's about to great, be like, I was like, they don't want idea. you to have a cliff notes. But yeah, well, they would be a lawyer. Like, someone who really wants to help. Oh my God. People. I love that. That's a great idea. Stick it to the man, everybody. Somebody make that. Okay. I've got too many other businesses. So yeah. if someone else make it and then share it with us. I'll talk to my lawyer friends. So back to the ward. Okay. And something about, oh, it's just kind of like we hear kind of like people, like it's nighttime, but like different people are kind of talking. One guy's like kind of yelling, like, wake up mm-hmm. and, you know, whatever. It's like shit's going on. And then Braids is now like making fun of um, Sawyer. And she's just like, <laughs> oh, like, why aren't you at your own house yet? Da, 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 da. And Sawyer kind of like, gets up from her bed and starts to go towards the door and one of the guys like walks up and stops her and he's just like hi i'm jacob and she's like move and he doesn't she punches him (laughs) nice i fucking love this bitch (laughs) then she runs to the door and she's like let me out let me out she's it's locked and like she's like screaming and she's just like i'm locked up with a bunch of psycho rapists and she starts like slamming on the door and just like freaking the fuck out the merce opens it she stops and looks at him and she slaps him in the face. What? And now two of the guys, like orderlies, like come in and they drag her to her bed. Nurse Balls comes in and like, because she's like, they're like, you know, she's like freaking out. And they yeah, like drag her yeah, down yeah. and hold her to her bed. Nurse Balls comes in and injects her with something. Fuck. And then like the the screen start like, it gets all like gets trippy all kind of. Like yeah. it's like, like it starts like clicking around a little bit. Like, whoa, 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 trippy, trippy. This is my actual worst nightmare. <laughs> it's terrifying. Ugh, this is terrible. <laughs> Next morning, Braids is standing over her, watching her sleep. She wakes up and kind of like looks down at her pants. And Braids is like, Allison pissed the bed, y'all. Oh, <laughs> cafeteria. All of the other patients are kind of like sitting at the tables, like eating. And she's just like sitting away from them and staring at everyone like separate. Yeah. And this very sweet nurse comes over and starts chatting with her. And she's like, how are you settling in? And Sawyer's like, I'm not. I'm going home. (laughs) And the nurse is just like, actually, Dr. Hawthorne asked me to come over here and talk to you like about that exactly. So like, let's go talk to him. Okay. So now we're in the doctor's office and Sawyer's like, I don't belong here. This is a mistake. I need to get back to my job, to my life, et cetera. And the doctor was like, yeah, that's the goal to get you back. Oh, fuck me he's like you were assessed as a danger to yourself or others and so we're going to keep you here for more observation because she said she had a plan because they asked if she thought about suicide and she said yes yeah and so she's like look at me she's like i have a support system she's like i'm you know i told my counselor that i feel down occasionally but like everybody does she's like i'm not like those people she's like give my bed to someone who really needs it Hmm. you know yeah fuck and the doctor says you assaulted a staff member and she just says well he just he looked like someone i know (gasps) Uh and 
the doctor says, and you assaulted a male patient. R- right. She's like, well, I mean, it was a rough night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and he's like, well, violence equals another seven days. Shit. Oh my God. So now we're in the group room, mm-hmm. which is not, not like the sleeping ward. It's clearly where they have like meetings the or awake whatever. The group room. Yeah. The awake, the day room. Yeah. And there's a guy who, it's the guy that was in the bed across from her. Yes. And he starts talking about, like, the rules and shit like that. And, like, I just start, I literally in this moment, like, panicked because I was like, I don't know what his name is. And he clearly is, like, in charge, so I'm going to call him King. Great. He's in charge. Oh, that's right. Okay. I love it. I love that you chose King, not boss or leader. But he's not, like, he's a patient still. Oh. He's not. I see. King. So he's the king of the ward. I love it. Perfect. Uh, and he's like kind of talking to everyone. And again, Sawyer is sitting away from everyone. May we all be kings of our own mental ward. Please. <laughs> May we. <laughs> <laughs> Ketrin just did a, a really funny face. Um, I have a crazy face. It was, you, I hope you all got you, it. That they could feel it in their ears. Did you guys sense it in your ear balls? <laughs> Sometimes we get real actory, and then we're just like, "Oh, no one can see us. No one we're can so see us." Used to being on camera, unless you hire us as actors, <laughs> we're <Zing>! available. <laughs> <laughs> what if this just turns into us advertising our services as actors? <laughs> on, on, is, audioly, isn't that what it already is? <laughs> Aren't we already doing that? Yes. Okay, continue. So, King comes and sits with her, mm-hmm. and. And he's like, what are your daily goals? And she's like, to find someone who believes that I don't belong here. (laughs) And mine as well. (laughs) And King is like, well, you're no different than anyone else here. And then he whispers to her, you gave them an in. And she's like, what? You gave them an in? And she's like, and he says, not now, later. (gasps) Cut to them talking outside. And there's like a little outdoor space. Okay. And it's just the two of them. And he says they brought up suicide and you bit right. that's all they need right yeah and then he goes on to say that it's a scam for money basically what that your health insurance pays for you to be there oh if you're being committed fuck and he's like it's like a business they admit patients they fill the beds they get money and Sawyer's like so they're locking up sane people for profit Fuck my life. Good thing I don't have insurance. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do. I just don't have good insurance. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like to actually use it. Right. Like it would take so many hoops that yeah, like. That they're like, you're not worth it. Yeah. No. <laughs> They're like, I'm sorry, what kind of insurance? We don't want you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, but I, I, I would like to stay overnight. Can I voluntarily say, stay overnight? Please go away, ma'am. Oh, God. We don't, we don't want you here. Oh, that's the true horror. Let's somebody make a somebody make a horror movie about our healthcare system. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts giving her tips and he's like, you know, you can find the right people. You can get whatever you want here. You can get weed, you can get porn, you can get whatever the fuck. Okay. And he's like, I'm in here trying to kip, kick opioid addiction, so just keep that shit away from me. Oh. And he's like, do your time, keep your head down, et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, you kind of make it sound like prison. (laughs) Yeah, basically. (laughs) And he's like, just like, it'll be over soon. If you have any questions, come find me. I like King. Yeah. And so. Is he cute? He's cute. Who is is he? I think he's um, on Saturday Night Live. Shut the fuck up. Who? But now I'm all right. I, I need the to moment look. I said that, I panicked and was like, "Wait, is he though?" <laughs> I'm just gonna look at IMDb so I don't see any spoilers. Hold no, on. No, wait. Let me look because I don't want you to see it. Okay. Things. It's Jay Farrow. Oh yeah. Wait. Let me see. Isn't he? That sounds he real not? familiar. Um. Unsane right along Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Okay. From 2010 to 2016. Okay. Yeah. He's definitely on Saturday Night Live. Good. Jay Farrell. I just want to see his face. He's super cute. Oh, yeah. Duh. He's adorable. Mm-hmm. I love him. Great. Yeah. Mm. Okay. 
cutie so anyway uh cut to later and everyone is in line now to take their pills Mm. and it's totally that thing where it's like little tiny cups yep everyone takes it and they check their mouth yeah check their mouth so um yeah did you know that it's like they make you show under your tongue uh but if you tuck back behind your molar which kind of like a chip in that exact moment of like mm, swallowing yeah, I think back. It would take like some practice. Yeah. But that's where you have to tuck it. For all so, of you trying to <laughs> avoid taking your pills. Pills at institutions. S- You're welcome. So Sawyer gets to the front of the line and she just kind of starts staring. So it's two dudes that are giving out the pills. It's Murph's who we know. Yeah. And Glass's beard guy. Okay. And she just starts staring at Glass's beard and she's like, no, <gasps> no way. You, you can't be anywhere near me. <gasps> the Boston cops got a copy of the restraining order <laughs> and she starts freaking the fuck out. And she's like, I, I hope following me was worth it because you're going to fucking jail. And basically like she kind of backs up and the people just keep taking the pills behind her right and other people Fuck. come and grab her like braids come she takes her pills like they're all used to people just being crazy around them because so they're, they're in an like, institution Fuck! this is fucking terrifying because it means that none of your reactions <laughs> mean anything exactly ah, i hate so, this can i leave you can't you're Fuck. in this okay so sawyer's freaking out and Glass's beard is wearing a name tag and it says George Shaw on okay. it. All right. And she's like, you're not George Shaw. He's not George Shaw. His name is David Strine. He's been following me. He texts me. He's been breaking into my house. Da, 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 da. He followed me all the way here from Boston. Again, patients just still taking pills. Yeah. And um, Glass's like, beard. Bitch, you cray. Glass's beard is just like, I've never been to Boston. Fuck. <laughs> and Sawyer's like, Oh, where's my phone? Where's my phone? I have all the text messages. So many text messages. Girl. And then people are just kind of like talking about how she's being crazy. And she's like, I, I, I'm calling the cops. I want him arrested. And now kind of the orderlies like come and kind of like grab her because she's just freaking the fuck out. Right. And they drag her away to her bed and they restrain her. Shit. In her bed. Oh my God. I'm so upset. I'm taking this so personally. <laughs> I'm really. I mean, oh God! Get on the bus, girl, because it's can't. just getting started. Shit. Okay, <laughs> this movie. Uh, uh, trigger warning: This movie's very upsetting. Uh, I just have. I'm having so many feelings about this. The end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm taking a nap. It's very upsetting. Nap time. Goodbye. Okay. On so many levels. <laughs> oh God. So many levels. Oh god. Get excited, and girl. I don't even I don't even give a shit about stalkers. Like stalkers in general don't personally scare me just because I feel like I don't carry myself as someone who, who nobody wa- who wants to stalk me. Like no, like that's Please don't not put that out thing. there. <laughs> um, but the not having Please your don't stalk me. yeah, the not having your reactions. It, yeah. Uh, that's my worst nightmare. Okay. It's, here we go, girl. Yeah, yay. Here we go. This right. is why we watch horror movies. Is it? <laughs> All I'm saying is paranormal things make it hard for me to sleep. Yeah. But real life horror is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Okay. This is a very real world horror. Let's, let's just let's just do this. Let's just go. So she's restrained in her own bed. Okay arms and legs in those like big um thingies shackly things not Le- shackly but, but it's you know like what I mean. leather like straps. leather straps yeah, yeah yeah king comes over and he's like you didn't listen to me yeah he's this like, was not floating under the radar bitch. yeah <laughs> he's like you keep this up you're gonna end up in the basement oh, fuck and she's like can you help me out of these and he kind of just walks away and he's like good night oh man girl you gotta listen to the king so now it's nighttime and she hears King talking kind of like across the way. And again, she's restrained, but she like lifts her head up. <laughs> I can't even sleep like that, Kim. I need to flip well, over Clearly my she couldn't either because yeah. she's still awake in the I middle of the this. night. 
and she hears King on his phone and or she hears King and it's like she looks up and he has I believe a phone like there's like a light in front of his face and it's like I don't know if he's on the phone or recording something but he says something like I got all the evidence I need um gonna shut it down what 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 is happening I don't know okay he I looks, just need to stay calm. He looks up and sees her looking at him and like hides the phone real quick. And he's like, I'll call you back. Next day, cafeteria. She's done. Networking king. I don't know <laughs> what I wrote. <laughs> it's the cafeteria. She's alone watching King. Not okay. networking. Got it. She's watching him. Well, I don't know. This might be a networking opportunity. Maybe. We don't know. I don't know. Like, who's he talking to? What? Are we, are we a business yeah. together? Should yeah, we, exactly. Or I'm available. Let's not judge. We're available for acting jobs. <laughs> <laughs> King. Hello. <laughs> um, unless you're insane. <laughs> are you sane or unsane or insane, King? Or, we don't know. Yep. So she's again sitting by herself, but like kind of watching King. Right. And Braids come up, comes up to her and just fucking starts attacking her. And she's like, physically, she like gets up all in her face. And she's like, yeah, like basically she's like, that was my last pack of cigarettes. And so Sawyer has to like throw her off her self. And then she slaps Braids in the face. Shit. (laughs) And so she's a slapper. She is. She defends herself. So the nurses and the orderlies come and take them, take her away. Yeah. Again. Again. Girl. Learn your lesson. <laughs> now Pull we're in the doctor's <laughs> office again, back with Dr. Hawthorne. And he's like, you're one incident away from the basement. Fuck. And she's like, I was sexually assaulted. Where is the outrage? Uh, and she's like, what's in the basement? Solitary confinement, sh- he says. Shit on my face. I hate this. Sawyer says, send me there. Wh- send me there because my stalker is here. <laughs> And the doctor's like, we did a thorough background on Mr. Shaw, George Shaw. And Sawyer's like, he's not George. He's David Strine. (sighs) And the doctor is like, I'm going to be giving you some additional meds to keep you from hurting people. Like lithium and other shit. That just makes you a drooler and Sawyer is like there is a predator here she's like what meds are you on shouldn't you be protecting me oh (sighs) she's not catching on as quickly as I want her to I think she's catching on she's very uh, it's she's feeling your feelings I and I often judge my own feelings and reactions so I think that's what I'm experiencing where I just I just have so many feelings about what is happening to her right now. Yeah. Okay. So does she. Okay. 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 So now we're in the cafeteria. She actually goes and sits at a table with two people at it. It's King and Jacob. Okay. Came and said hey to her that one time. And as soon as she sits down, King immediately gets up and walks away. And then Jacob is just like, hi, I'm Jacob. (laughs) Hello. And she just walks away. Back to the pill line. David George, glasses beard. Sure. Again, giving out pills. And he's like, and he apologizes to her. He's like, I'm sorry that you were so upset. I hope this helps. Oh. And Sawyer's just stares at him. She's like, I hope someone cuts your balls off and shoves them down your throat. Oh, God. Sawyer. Calm down. <laughs> Under the radar. And now there's kind of like a commotion. Here's the radar. Here's you, bitch. But she doesn't even, she's not like screaming it. She literally just stares him in the face and she's like, I hope someone cuts your balls off and throws them down, shoves them down your throat. Oh, God. Now there's like a commotion behind her in line of people fighting or something. And in that weird moment, like we see a close up of like David George holding an envelope and it says, Angela Valentini, Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. And then, what's the name? Angela Valentini. Angela. Okay. Which is her last name. Yeah. And then she freaks out again and is like, it's him. 
he's been to my mom's house. He stole her mail. And she starts freaking out. She's like, I'm not fucking crazy. But also you have to remember the way that all of this shot, it's like all very close ups of things. You know what right. I mean? Because like all we really see is just like this letter, all of us, or like this envelope all of a sudden. Like it's all very like, right, boop, 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 right, right, like right. what's real, what's not. Yeah. Okay. We don't know. Okay. And she's like, I'm not fucking crazy. Again, the nurses come and restrain her. And Dave George just kind of stares at her. Back to the ward in the morning. All the patients are being let out of the ward. And they're yet again unrestraining Sawyer. (laughs) Right. right. Sawyer. God. Okay. (laughs) Back to the cafeteria. (laughs) She doesn't (laughs) see King anywhere. So she finds him in that outdoor space. And she walks out and he quickly puts something away. And she goes up and she's like, let me use it. And he's like, oh, excuse me. And she's like, I know you're breaking the rules. I don't care as long as I get to use it or I'll tell everyone. Shit. And he's like, the cops, he's like calling the cops isn't going to do anything but have them take my cell phone. Right. Yeah. And then none of us get to use the cell phone. Exactly. So question number five what does she say to convince him and what do you say to convince him or do? Uh, she says, I'm not going to call the cops. I'm going to call someone else. She says, I'm not going to call the cops. I'm going to call my mom. It won't be tra- like it, it won't be traced back to you. Uh, so let me fucking use it. And she does the same. You both do that? Mm hmm. That's two half points. Okay. She says, I'm not calling the cops, I promise. And I'll suck your dick. Oh. <laughs> okay, girl. You do what you gotta do. King kind of like laughs and he's like What if what if I had answered that perfectly? What if I had been like, Well, I would say that I'm not calling the cops and then I would offer to suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have put it past you. Uh, that's true. I wouldn't have put it past me either. Um, I was like, how do you convince him to get that fucking phone? Yeah. You are desperate. That's true. Sorry, Eric. He kind of laughs. You don't have an Eric in this situation. Oh, that's right. I forgot. He kind of laughs and he's like, all right, five minutes. Don't get caught. With my dick or the phone? No, with the phone. Oh, okay. I thought he was like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you get five minutes with my dick. Look. A lot of biddies around here want to get the dick of the king. <laughs> I got that king dick. If you want to get this king dick, got you got five minutes. Dick. Better make it good. Make it oh worth your God. while. I fucking love it. Get that king dick. Can we please record this and send it to Jay Farrell? Yes. <laughs> well, just so you know, we are recording this. That part's done. Oh, yeah. Great. We're recording everything we're saying are right we? now. Yeah. I thought I was just talking to you. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times I forget that. I know. <laughs> I do too. So, anyway, she gets the phone. Question number six. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? And she. Uh, Ding! <laughs> um, I think now she's going to call her mom. Uh, because the cops clearly... W- was a fruit of not a fruitful effort so um and you know who i might call who motherfucking jill jill so she calls her mom i'm gonna call jill can i ask why you're calling jill because Jill is in the same city as me. Uh, we already know that her mom is 450 miles away. So I feel like Jill might be someone who could advocate on my behalf in person immediately. I'm giving you one point. Okay. She calls her mom. Okay. I don't, again, like Jill's like a new person. I kind of just feel like Jill would be like, oh, you're in a loony bin? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Sorry. Yeah. Like, she doesn't know you. Right. So she doesn't you know could, me well enough. You could... Be crazy. Be for all she knows. needing to be there for all she knows. That's so, true. Okay. 
you could be needing to be there for all we know at yep. this point. So anyway, uh, she calls her mom. And her mom is like, it's been three days. Where have you been? And Sawyer's like, I'm in trouble. She And she, at this point, she's like just outside and like has like her sweater over her head and is just like hiding behind a tree, mm-hmm. like on the phone. And her mom's like, how much do you need? And Sawyer's like, no, 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 not like that. I've been involuntarily committed and voluntarily committed into to this um, uh, place in Pennsylvania. And she starts to explain the whole situation. And then she's like, I had this stalker, et cetera, et cetera. And she tells that whole story too, because apparently she never told her mom. Okay. And he's here and no one believes me. Okay. The mom freaks out and she's like, what's the name of that hospital? And she starts like grabbing shit, like ready to get out the fucking door. And because basically it's like they're from Boston, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. And then now they're somewhere in Pennsylvania. Right. So she hangs up, gives the phone back and is like, rain check on the blowjob. <laughs> nice. So. But now he's going to be thinking about that uh, blowjob. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? It's almost better than actually getting the blowjob. Right. Almost. You hold that fucking blowy over their head. Is that what you do? A little bit. I don't. <laughs> Give them away. Yep. Handed them out. I used to. I used JK, to ha- you got to earn that shit, bruh. I used to hand them out like fucking candy. Well, we were young. Sorry, dad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't remind me that your parents listen to this. I know. It's only dad. Mom doesn't. <laughs> She's like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I forgot to tell you that I FaceTimed with my brother. We can get this too, but I, I thought FaceTimed you were about with to say my... I FaceTime with your dad. No. It's <laughs> like I mean, okay. I FaceTime with my brother the other day to talk to my nieces, but he was at my cousin's house and so like my whole big family was around like uh-huh. talking and yeah. so they were all just like sitting outside. It actually made me really sad to not be there. Oh. It's like kind of that thing where it's just like, oh, they were just hanging out on a Saturday. I like, hear you. A bunch of my cousins and aunts and stuff just mm-hmm. literally hanging. That's like, so hard. Drinking, having a good time. Yeah. And I was like, because it wasn't even for a reason. Yeah. Um, but anyway, like 90% of what we talked about was the podcast. Really? Because <laughs> Bobby was talking about how he listens. He's like, I mostly just listen to the first 20 minutes of like catching up on you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. That's fucking adorable I know. that there's someone who only listens to the part that other people are probably skipping. yeah they're like can we do, do, do. <laughs> how do we know when you start the movie yeah. um and then he made all my cousins like uh download it and shit that's fucking adorable i know it was very cute i love it so um so now hello to all my cousins and other family members that may or may not be listening now. hi kim's cousins and family it's back to blowjobs <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> oh, cut shit. to mom showing up next day at Got the it. front desk she's like i want to see my daughter and she's like i'm not fucking leaving until i see her yeah she goes into the they let her go into the doctor's office and the mom is like i am bringing her home and etc cetera, etc cetera. and the doctor's like this is the best place for her like this is where she belongs and the mom is like, she is stuck in a hospital with her stalker. Is that the place, best place for her? And she actually like pulls out her phone and like puts it on record. And she's like, repeat that for me. Repeat that. Jeez. And the I doctor fucking like this mama bear though. <laughs> she is. She like is there for her daughter. Yeah. I like it. And the doctor is like, maybe you should talk to hospital administration. Mm-hmm. So now she's sitting up and talk to, talking to admin lady. And admin lady is like, look, we're a very ethical organization. She's free to leave once she doesn't pose a threat to herself or others. Shit. And mom is like, she doesn't. Yeah. And the admin is like, we've gotten a lot of positive messages and reviews from people who have gotten like amazing help from here, et cetera, et cetera. And the mom's like, I'm getting a lawyer and I'm going to fucking make shit happen. Da, 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 da. And the admin's like, do you think that's in the best interest of your daughter? Yes. I mean... What about her new job? She hasn't been there that long. Do you think they'll want to know that she's going through that kind of like case? And like, Ugh. do you think it'll be hard for her to get another job after that? Da, 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 da. Um, do you think that's a risk to your daughter's future? Fuck. All these things. And the mom is like, can I at least see her? And the admin's like, of course. Shit. She's like, I mean, you're like visiting hours like just ended but like we'll let you see her for a little or something like that. But I mean like she's that. currently missing work like she's already getting her current job fucked up. Right? You would think so. Yeah like how I don't know 
like what are they who's telling work because she's clearly not telling work yeah, anything to me it would be like better where it's like hey remember that time you fucking missed a bunch of days and she's like yeah i have a lawyer looking into that i agree but i don't know that was kind of she it wasn't like it was all very vague but i i took that and as the what mom she, is as that was what yeah. she was saying and basically. the mom is emotional and like just trying to yeah i get it i mean regardless she still has to like get the lawyer do the thing so yeah. it's kind of like it's in not going to happen in this moment anyway. Exactly. So she see they get to see each other. They hug and like Sawyer's like, "I'm so sorry. I should have told you about all this, like, and and why I actually moved." And the mom is like, "Is he here now?" And Sawyer's like, "No, he works the night shift." And mom is like, "Okay, I'm getting you out. I'm going to get the police, the FBI, a lawyer, like whatever. You're coming home with me." And she's like, "You look tired." Mm. And so I was like, I mean, I'm not just tired. I'm scared. And the mom is like, I mean, these clothes too, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and the mom's like, I'm getting you out, like, et cetera. And she's like, you know, I, I, I just need this. Like you and me talking. Like you've been building walls since dad. And so I was like, I know. Yeah, that was hard. This is different though. Yeah. And then it's like a close up of the mom's ring, like wedding ring. Okay. The mom is like, I'm staying at a hotel down the road. And, you know, Sawyer's like, you can contact me on that phone number. And mom's like, I'm going to um, bring you clothes, cops, lawyer, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So cut to the mom at the police station. And the police are like, there's nothing we can do without proof of a, co- of a crime being committed. Right. Then she's on the phone with the lawyer and he's like, Pennsylvania law says that a patient can only be held on involuntary commitment for seven days. After that, they need a court order, which I'm sure they're not going to get. Right. And once the insurance stops paying, um, if something happens um, or whatever, then call me. And he like hangs up. (laughs) (laughs) And so now we're back to the ward and, um, we're in the pill line mm-hmm. again. Yeah. And Sawyer walks by whatever the fuck his name is. Dave, Greg, George. I just keep writing GD and I'm and then I keep forgetting his name. Glasses beard? Glasses beard. Got it. And she's like, What are you doing here? Uh oh. And he's like, Hello, Sawyer. Just picking up an extra shift. Nice to see you during the daytime. Shit. And he's like, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and but then we do another like weird close up thing a little mm-hmm. bit, and it's like it almost looks like he's taking a pill out of his like pocket and puts it in her cup, and then what? hands her, and then hands her pills, and she takes them, and just like glare, like she doesn't see that he did that. Kind of yeah, it's okay. or it's like it's all very like da, 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 what's real, what's not. Okay. Uh, but she takes her pills and just glares at him. Shit. Like hardcore. And then it gets real drippy. What? It's just like freaking out like da, 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 da. And it's just her freaking out. And it's all close up in her face. And the camera's all shaky and moving around like da, 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 da. And she's all like, where the fuck are the crayons? Where the fuck are the crayons? The fuck? <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Where the fuck are the crayons? And she's freaking the fuck out. I mean, honestly, though, Kim, <laughs> like, where are the where crayons? Are the crayons? <laughs> where are they, though? Where are the fucking crayons, Ketrin? Like, just give, give me, me the, the fucking crayons. crayons. And they're all like, and it's just like, and it's people kind of grabbing her. And it's like, Sawyer, calm down. Sawyer, calm down. And it's like, silence. Oh, uh, shit. Cut to the mom at the hotel. She's in her room and she's standing at the window, I think, smoking a cigarette. And there's a knock on the door and they're like, maintenance. And she's like, fuck. And she like puts the cigarette out and starts like waving shit around. She's like, I didn't call maintenance. And they're like, yeah, we need to check out the AC units, man, because there was an electrical electrical thing next door. So we have to check them all, et cetera, et cetera. Um, question number seven. What does she do? What do you do? The mom? Mm-hmm. It's maintenance at the door. Mm-hmm. I mean... I'm trying to stay alive. It's not my property, though. Well, I think mom lets them in. And I think mom lets them in. Uh, If I'm being really regimented, 
I'm going to keep my door locked and also do the little flippy lock where it like, even if, you know, right. little flippy lock. And I'm going to say, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm naked. You'll have to come back later. You can come back when I'm not here, but I'm sorry. Sorry. Goodbye. And do the little flippy lock over. So that's my answer. Uh, okay. Why don't we just say ding ding for Rosie? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, sorry. So you're saying you don't let them in? No, I don't. But I specifically do that, the lock the door, but also do the little, the little thing that flips over the thing. So even if they pick the lock, you still can't get in. Okay. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Yay. I would have suggested maybe going further, but, um, or like calling the front desk and being like, hey, is maintenance coming? Ooh, Um, that's smart. But. Just not letting them in is a, a plus one to the question, I would say. Yeah. And especially the yep. little extra lucky thing. Uh, but yeah, because then you could be like, they would be like, no. And then you could like call the police. Yeah. Uh, not that you have any reason to suspect anything. But no, opens- but, if, but if they start arguing with me more. Right. That is when I'd be like. I'm calling the front desk. I mean, go fuck yourself. Exactly. Like I just told you I'm that you can't come in. I'm sorry. <laughs> she opens the door. Shit. And it's Glasses Beard. <gasps> it's Glasses Beard? Fuck. She lets him in. Did she see Glasses Beard no. before? Fuck. Okay. She lets him in. Cut to back to the hospital and we're just in like the like the pill room basically but we're Mm -hmm. not seeing any people we're just like kind of scanning over like the rows and rows of bottles of shit okay and but we hear nurse balls voiceover and she's like we had an issue with the valentini girl today (gasps) somehow she got a mega dose of methylphenolate (gasps) this morning instead of her normal respiradone and lithium fuck and she's like not sure how that happened And then we hear a guy kind of be like, well, everyone's so overworked around here. Um, But she's like, well, make sure to double check all the meds for all the patients. And then we kind of like come around the corner and see that it's Dr. Ball or Nurse Balls and Glasses Beard talking. And he's divvying out the pills for the day or the night or whatever. And he's like, I won't let that happen. He's like, this job means the world to me. And she's like, I know. I mean, you're here day and night. You're picking up shifts. Like, you care so much. Like, we could really use more people like you. You're a gift from God. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Back to the ward. Uh, Sawyer now is all, like, curled in her bed. Yeah. Um, Clearly, like, off whatever the fuck it was. And King comes over. And he's like, you broke the TV today shit and she's like oh, i'm sorry i didn't mean to i love tv oh and then he kind of like sweetly like Me consoles too, her I mean, like sweetly consoles her and it's it's like very sweet and Aww. she's like i must be insane oh honey and he's like no i know the difference between people who are supposed to be here and those that end up here and she's like i th- she's like i think i'm in column one And he's like, you didn't think that yesterday. Like, what changed? Yeah. And she's like, what did you want to be when you were a little kid? And he says, an astronaut. But then I learned about all the math and et cetera. And she's like, well, there's still time. And he's like, what about you? And she's like, I wanted to be a renegade med student, like the one who pinpoints like all the diseases that the other doctors don't catch, et cetera, et cetera. What a Um, specific dream. Not just a med student, but a renegade med student. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And she's like uh but i had no follow through like i couldn't even make it through pre-med and so instead i volunteered at a hospice and she's like that's where i met david strine oh and now it's like a flashback um as she's kind of talking and she went there to volunteer and it's like her sitting and reading to an old man with glasses beard kind of standing behind her kind of just at the window and he's and she's like he was nice quiet uncomfortable she's like i kind of felt bad for him she's like he spent two hours two hours a week talking to his father who doesn't even recognize him oh and she says my dad died when i was 15 Hmm. and it cuts to them 
at the old man's funeral and Glasses Beard is standing next to her and he grabs her hand and looks at her and says, he'd want us to be together. Uh Uh-oh. And then spaghetti. She has a note from him that says like, I love you forever. And then it's her at work and there's like a big thing of roses and all the girls around her are like really excited because it's so sweet. They sent her roses. Someone sent her roses. And then it's her phone and it's text, 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 so many texts. Like, why won't you answer me? That's so scary. And then she blocks the collar. And then she takes a shower. She's in her apartment. She gets out and she's still wearing a towel. And she's but in the bathroom and she kind of starts putting her makeup, but she hasn't put on clothes yet. And then she walks out of the bathroom into her bedroom and there's a dress laid out on the <gasps> bed. No, thank you. I don't want to wear that today. Question eight. What does she do? What do you do? Oh, sorry, Rosie. Um, this is like flashback kind of basically, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So it's like, where does she go next? Okay. Kind of thing. And she is in her apartment. Is it an apartment? Mm-hmm. Okay. And she comes out of the bathroom. It doesn't mean like immediate. Well, yeah. Kind of like, what's the next step for her? I am going to quickly grab my cell phone, uh, go back into the bathroom, lock. This is me. Lock the door and ca- what? I guess I'm being unclear. So not in this immediate moment. It's kind of like, what's the next life step for her? Oh, okay. Um. Like she blocked his number. Uh, but what about the part where somebody laid a thing out on her bed? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to um, change my number and move out of that apartment. That is what I would do. Probably go stay. Uh, probably, uh, probably go stay. Um, actually, you know what I would do? Not immediately move out of the apartment. Go stay with my mom and like decide like I'm never going back to that apartment. Um, look for a new place to live from my mom's house. Change my number. Have movers pack up all my shit once I find a place to live. But not actually, uh, you know, not actually tell my landlord that I'm leaving yet, that kind of stuff. I would just go stay elsewhere, quietly go look for somewhere else to live once I found a place, have movers go in and and leave. Mm-hmm. Just so there was like less of like a record that could be checked up on. That's what I would do. Um, what does she do? <clears throat> she changes her number for sure and files a restraining order against him. I'm giving you a ding and a half. Yay, ding and a half. She does get a restraining order. Okay. And then she starts talking to a detective who is Matt Damon. What? Out of nowhere. And in reality? Yeah. Matt Damon's in this? Yeah. Okay. And What's up, buddy? I don't know. I was like, is that you? Okay. Matt Damon? Cool. Okay. Great. What's up? And he starts talking about the security for her home. And he's like, you should know where any police stations or hospital are, like anywhere in your positions. You should sell your car, use ride service. Um, and he like is looking all around her place. He's like, don't use this garage in the back ever. Um, always have your keys in your hand, especially at night. Um, have a go bag ready, like with Ooh. cash, clothes, gun, if you're open to that to learning to getting a firearm and learning how to use it etc uh start altering your routine routine constantly he's like are you on social media and she's like yeah i'm on facebook but it's private and he's like "Mm, he can find old friends and then get their pictures from them and then use a fake make a fake account and friend you oh my god (sighs) he's like delete your account i need to know all of these things tell your friends inform them and um and don't let them tag you in anything. He's like, anytime someone's taking a picture, stay out of it. He's like, your cell phone is your enemy. And he pulls out a book and it's like a survival guide. And he's like, and this is your new best friend. Oh, shit. I want one. And 
I don't, all of this makes me very sad. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want any of these things. This yeah. sounds horrible. Uh, I just like, I like feeling, pre- I like feeling prepared. I like feeling like I know what to do in any given situation. So I think that kind of shit provides me I comfort. I like living my life and not needing to feel on the defense every second of every day. Mm. Uh, so back to the ward and Sawyer's like, and now he's here or it's all in my head. Fuck. What is it? Which is it? And King just like hugs her and it's sweet. Ugh. And he gets up and he's like, Hey, column two for life and gives her like a little fist bump. I love you, Jay Farrell. So we're back to the pills line. I know he's the cutest back to the pills line with, um, beard glasses and and he says to her uh they say you had a rough day and she takes the pills and he says to her sweet dreams and she just looks and is like drop dead <laughs> <laughs> that's nighttime at the war she goes to bed and or she like lays in her bed and she spits out the pills nice so she didn't take spits out the pills. I just covered my hand as I did that. To like, <laughs> or covered my hand, covered my mouth. I put my hand over my mouth and did and not speak into the microphone. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> she spit out the pills. <laughs> we have an audio medium, just so I you so know. I like visual. We, no. <laughs> Me too. So she takes out the pill of her mouth and puts them under her pillow and she feels something under her pillow. What? What is it? It's a wedding ring. Oh, that looks <gasps> like her mom's. What does she do and what do you do? Question nine. What do I do? Okay. Um. Okay. I'm gonna. I am gonna go to King because he's my ally, and I'm gonna be like, okay. I need to tell you what's happening for me right now. I just found what looks like my mom's wedding ring under my pillow. What do you think I should do? Because part of me is afraid that I stole her wedding ring because I might be insane. But if that's not the case, then somebody else stole my mom's wedding ring and put it under my fucking bed. And I feel like it's glasses beard. So I'm going to go to him to sort of filter my thoughts through. As someone that I trust. Um, uh, what does she do? She. It's n- it's nighttime. Mm-hmm. It's not like she can go use the phone whenever she wants. Correct? No. Yeah. I think even daytime they can't. They can't. That. Yeah. I didn't know if they like if she like knew that she would have a phone a phone call at some point. No. Okay. Um She also goes to Jay, asks if she can use his phone to call her mom to ask if her mom's ring is missing. Ding ding. Yay! She goes to King and is like, I need to use her phone now. She calls the hotel for her mom's room and she leaves a message and she's like, hey, mom, I left a message on your cell. Call me back as soon as possible. She goes back to um, towards her bed and like as she's walking away, they kind of do like a little symbol to each other of like column two for life. Uh, um, so adorbs. Adorbs. And then we notice that through the window of the ward the blinds are open and in the hallway is glasses beard watching through the blinds their little interaction get out of here glasses beard daytime yes king is smoking outside um on the phone in the little outside area and he's saying i don't know if she's telling the truth or not some days she seems normal but he's like i don't know maybe i've been in here too long but Ooh. Can you check on something for me? Okay. And he's like, no, it's not because I like her. Oh, but you kind of do, don't Uh, you? I don't know. And then Sawyer comes out. And she's like, did you get any calls? Mm. And he's like, nothing. And she's like, my mom didn't pick up. Moms call back. Right. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. And so King is like, okay. 
what day are you on now? Five? He's like, focus on that. It's all downhill from now. You have a few days left and you're free and your mom will be there waiting for you. I mean, he's not wrong. Mm -hmm. And she's like, how long have you been here? And he says that he's on the opioid um, withdrawal thing. So that's four weeks. He's on week three. So he gets out a few days after you. And she's like, well, maybe. uh," And he's like, no, Ah. it's different out there. And she's like, I mean, you've just been a friend and I just want to be. He's like, I know this is King Dick, but y'all need to get Ah! off it. King Dick. (laughs) He's like, you know, I just want to do more for you. And he's like, when we're free, it might be different, but um, maybe you'll let me use your phone sometime or something. Use your phone, phone. if you know what I mean. Uh, wink, Hi, Kim's wink. family. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Skip. <laughs> and and so he's like, okay, maybe. And then we realize that Glasses Beard is watching from inside. Ah, uh, get honestly get a life buddy get out of here (laughs) so king's now in the bathroom in the bathroom stall sitting on the toilet and he's like looking on his phone okay and he hears a person come in so he stands up and flushes he walks towards us which is the sink and then we see that behind him glasses beard is at the urinal okay and so king starts washing his hands and glasses beard comes up behind him and slams his head against the wall no Get out of here. Cut to King tied up and bleeding like he's in those same restraint kind of things and like a restraint to a wheelchair. And he's like in what looks like a basement area. And it's not like a solitary confinement situation. It looks like an actual like underground basement area. Um, But like dingy kind of an old looking. And Glasses Beard carries some machine kind of over to him. And he starts saying to King, like, you're not supposed to have a personal relationship. It uh, it hurts with recovery or oh, something like Lord. that. And he turns on the machine. And it's sort of um, like an electronic sort of thing. And it's like that those things. It looks like those things that they use to, like, restart hearts. Like it's the, Yes. Where it's like, dun, dun. Uh-huh. Uh, he turns it on, turns it all the way up. Shit. And then he puts those things to King's temples. <gasps> no. And... Uh, and then it's up to his face and then we just hear ah, and it cuts no. away I don't want to get my head defibrillized cafeteria shit Braids comes up to Sawyer and she's like your boo didn't come to group today Braids oh my god he didn't come to leech lunch either do you think it's because of you do you think it's your personality or your rat face Sawyer I, throws hot coffee on her and she's like, fuck you. Yeah. Both of them then get, get carried away by the order. Yeah. <laughs> Brought to their bed and they lay down. Not restrained, but they just kind of lay down. Yeah. And immediately Sawyer like lays down, puts her hands under the pillows. Bonus question, what's under the pillow? Is it what's under the pillow? <clears throat> Something of King's. Is it King's phone? Ding! Yay! Plus one. I need to write that somewhere. I needed that bonus. I wasn't doing great. It's the the phone. She picks it up and there's a text from Nate King and it says, open me. She opens it and there's a picture of King all tied up and passed out in this wheelchair. Fuck my and life. She freaks up and runs to the orderlies that had just like brought her back in here. And she's like, you need to look at this. You need to look at this. But they immediately just kind of grab Compass, her and restrain her and right. like throw like the phone number. We don't even see what happens to it. She's like, look at this. Look at this. Cause they, but they immediately put her down onto the bed and Glasses Beard walks in at that moment and like injects her with something. <gasps> No, because now I'm like, did she even have the phone? You know what I mean? But uh, uh, uh. okay, cut to glasses beard in the secret basement, taking the restraints off of one of King's arms, 
and injects his arm with fentanyl. Stop fucking injecting me with shit. <laughs> fentanyl, isn't that what fucking killed Michael Jackson? I don't know. It's just like, um, it's like a real, it's basically what's killing a lot of opio- opioid users and heroin addicts. Like it's Fuck like a my thing they keep putting life. into heroin, basically. Yeah. And it's that kind of thing where it's like people, I think if they use it, like not that many, it's, it just can kill you very quickly. I, I think it's also w- what killed Michael Jackson. So he cleans up his face, takes him out of the wheelchair and then just like kind of leans him against the wall on the floor. No. Cut to Sawyer passed out somewhere, laying down, not a bed. And I'm like, the basement? Oh, shit. It looks like a rubber room, basically. Uh, like there's just like gym mats, basically, oh, for lack okay. of better words, all on the floor and all over the walls. Like, like a padded room. Padded room. Okay. Yeah. And there is a camera up in the, the corner okay. of the room. Cut to nurse balls. She's with Glasses Beard, and she's telling him that they found a dead body. Fuck! It was King, and he was in the old EC2 room. EC2? Which I did look up, and it was electroconvulsive therapy. <gasps> Which I think is just electroshock therapy. I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah. And she's like, he OD'd. <laughs> and Glasses Beard was like, oh my gosh, poor guy. Oh, he was doing so well. What a waste of a good dick. <laughs> <laughs> and person. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so uh, uh, Nurse Balls is like, don't tell any of the other patients. Oh, God. I'm so upset. Now he was such a sweetie. I know. Glasses beard goes into the padded room, and Sawyer immediately like crawls into the corner, and he's like, "I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna touch you. I just want to be here with you." Why? She looks up at the camera, and he's like, "Oh, I disconnected them." (gasps) She says, "Are you gonna kill me?" And he's like, "How could you ask that? I love you so much from the moment we met." she's like did you kill king and he's like look he chose what happened to him like i choose to protect you from all threats to your well-being and she's like well what about my mom and he's like angela is like family to me i'm not on board with (laughs) this motherfucker whether it is a real person or <laughs> or a manifestation of something in her head. I'm not on board with either one. And I would like him to leave or I would like to leave. I just want that to be clear. Great. Is my position clear to you? I've got it. Great. May I move on? Yes. God. Okay. She asks how he got the ring then. <sighs> and he says, she gave it to me. No, and she- she's like, no, you're lying. Uh I told her about you. Also, and he's people like, don't just like hand over their fucking wedding <laughs> rings. Well, I'll tell you what happened because uh, Sawyer's like, she came all the way from Boston and he's like, so did I. And she's like, what did you do to her? And he's like, we talked and we shared. And she told me about how, about your dad and, and, and how they met. And sh- I told her about how we met and about us. And she said, she, wanted our love to be sacred and that's why she gave the ring because she wanted to be sacred like hers angela and mike and sawyer gets up and she's like don't you ever say his name and then she starts freaking out and like banging on the door and she's like help me help me question 10 what does she do and what do you do i am so this is this is why this is one of my biggest nightmares because the more you physically fight the more you're restrained and everyone around you is looking for instances where you are acting quote unquote insane so okay no one to is t- around you right now. I know she's in a room, but what I'm saying is like, even if he is her stalker, 
there's no way that he got an entire uh, institution of employees to like be on his stalker team. That's not a thing. So at least everybody else at this place knows that they work in a hospital, even if he somehow infiltrated it. And she is in the inferior position as a patient and taken less seriously because they believe that she's mentally compromised. So me lashing out at him or fighting him or something is only going to cause me to be restrained or restricted more. So this is an instance where I would put on my very best acting cap and I would absolutely realistically pretend that I'm into it, that I'm like, you know what, you're right. I was just so scared to like admit my feelings to you and then it got kind of weird, but I know you're the only person that hasn't tried to hurt me in here. Like just put it on, get him on my side and get his defenses down until I could get him out of the room and then get myself out of that room by good behavior because that's my only weapon at this point is to just like remain as chill as possible or I'm just going to keep getting restrained. What I need to do is appear as sane as possible so that I can get authorities on my side. Uh, what does she do? And they're in a padded room. The camera's disconnected. Mm-hmm. I really am having trouble like knowing wh- because she la- she's lashed out at times when I didn't expect her to lash out. I think that fuck it. I'm going to say that we do it hand in hand. Ding. Yay. I'm going to give a point for you because I feel like it's a good tactic. I don't know yeah. if that will work, but, but it's one of the, it's like one of the things where it's like, I have so few options. You do have yeah. so few options. Yeah. He says, I have a cabin in the woods in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. It's That's- off the grid. It's got its own well and solar. It's beautiful. We'll be happy. <laughs> and she's like, we will never be happy. Girl. You could never make me happy. Look at what you've done. <laughs> There's no path to happiness for either of us. And he's like, I see you at work with your friends. You're not happy. You're just like floating through life. Jesus Christ. He's like, There's a piece missing. And she's like, And you're what's missing? And he's like, Why not? I fucking hate you, is why. Oh, God. And he's like, I love you so much. And she's like, you don't know the first thing about love. Or she's like, you don't know the first thing about me. And he's like, we spent months together. No, she says, we were in the same room while I talked to your father and you had nothing to say to him. You're not capable of loving anybody. You uh, 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 Losing his mind was the best thing to happen to him. (gasps) Do you think he'd be proud of you? What? Oh, what? Am I too mean? Am I not the girl that you fell in love with? You don't know me. Oh. And he's like, I do. And she's like, well, then love me like this. Love me like this. Love me like a cheater, like a slut, like a bitch. All the shit about me. Love all of that. And he's like, that's not you. And he's like, she's like, you're a fucking simpleton. Oh, well, Mm -hmm. this is definitely a tactic. I'm a sweet girl in your head. That's not me. Who did this to you, huh? Who rejected you? Did someone block you or ghost you or what, huh? Did they laugh in your face? What did they do to you? Because that's me. That's who you are to me. You be- That's who you've been stalking for two fucking years. And she's like, two years? Like, come the fuck on. Like, wow. she's like, you could have found someone else. She's like, even child killers get visits <gasps> in prison. 
visitors in prison she's like someone can love a child killer so someone can love you probably <laughs> because <laughs> and she's like getting all up in his fucking face and then he chokes her and slams her against the wall and he's like choking her and she's like do it fucking do it and then he starts to cry and like lets her go and he like throws himself on the floor and he's like crying in the corner shit and that she's was just, a tactic mm -hmm. and yeah. she just says now i see how you love me oh sh yeah because uh, yeah okay. and then he just gets up he unlocks the door and he leaves Ooh, fuck cut to employee locker room i'm assuming it's like two orderlies and they're looking at something or like through a box or something and they find this notebook and they're like it looks like king was taking notes of like all the shady shit that happens here and they're like the second floor should see this Mm -hmm. cut to the woods the woods the woods i don't want to be in the woods we're in the woods girl get me out of the woods get in the woods <laughs> <laughs> it's the trees the sun's a shining wow there's a lady jogging she's got her dog jogging away dee 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 we see some fingers sticking out of leaves what? on the ground. Those aren't supposed in to be in the forests. Dirt. <laughs> and the little dog comes up and's like, what's this? Uh, Is that a body? Uh, Cut to cops pulling out a body. Yay, bodies. Nope. Cut to the morgue. Hi. And we see King <gasps> on one slab and then other guy on another slab. And I'm like, orderly question mark like what he the, looks like the same outfit okay as them but and we're not to believe that the fingers coming up out of the ground were king by any means no no no, no. okay All uh right. they already found king we're right, right. we're to believe it's this new guy no, okay got it and then we see the morgishan talking to the cops mm -hmm. and uh but don't hear anything and then we see actual orderly guy so i was like okay it's not him then but it's the same outfit and he's with admin lady showing her the notebook and she says you did the right thing bringing this to me okay back to sawyer yes. in the padded room glasses beard comes in and he's like good morning hi i brought you breakfast it's your favorite and he describes exactly what it is and he's like you ate that every single day at your desk uh, get out of my fucking life <laughs> Jesus but she takes the food because she's like fucking Whatever. starving she's like yeah. she starts eating finally and he sits down it? next to her it was like a breakfast sandwich oh, okay. blah 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 and uh, he sits down next to her and she's like thanks for this and he's like you're welcome she's like I guess I'm not used to people being so considerate most guys wouldn't even think about what I eat or what I want. Girl. And he's like, I know everything about you. He's like, I know your favorite book. I know where you want to travel. I know your favorite song. And he like says them. Like he's like, I know your favorite book is this. Your favorite song is this. I know the next place you want to go is Portugal because da 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 da. And she's like, okay, enough. Like, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Um, she's like, you can't keep me down here. Like, people are going to be looking for me. My my mom, my job, et cetera, et cetera. And he's like, well, you can call your mom from our cabin. <laughs> oh, my God. You're so crazy, Glasses Beard. And he's like, I mean, do you really want to go back to that job anyway? <laughs> I mean, no, I don't want to work, Glasses Beard. I do want to live in a cabin. But you're like a fucking creep. And also how are you gonna live she's like what are you secretly rich yeah like also kim like i'm tired and i, I want to take a nap girl. well we're here you got to keep your wits about you okay but maybe i could take a nap in that N cabin you know if that's where you want to go i mean just well let's just keep going i'll let i'll let you know okay okay all right here i, I don't go. know if that's gonna help you stay alive or not i don't know okay maybe my goal maybe. is changing to taking a nap taking a tea, tea i think that's been our goal a lot lately like, how do we get sweet sweet relief <laughs> can i just get a nap can i just have a nap that how sounds nap? so good okay i just want sweet sweet relief okay <laughs> at certain points we're like just 
kill me. I know. <laughs> Get me out of here. I just want sweet, sweet relief. Okay. So he knows my sandwich and he knows my song and I want a nap. And okay. he's talking about the cabin again. And she's like, what are you rich? Da, da, da. And he's like, well, actually, there's like an old diner for sale right by there. We c- I was thinking we could renovate it. I mean, sure. And she's like, how are you, we going, how are you going to explain my absence from the world? And he's like, oh, well, I already changed the duration of your stay. Uh, Admin thinks that your insurance ran out and that you're already gone. Uh, and he's like, um, uh, ruined. You just, ru- uh, 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 I don't want to stay in the cabin with you anymore. You made it fucking weird again. <laughs> You made it fucking weird. You should have stuck. You should have just ended it with bringing me my favorite sandwich. Then you made it fucking weird again. God. Glasses beard. He tells her. There's a back door right out of here on this floor and it goes directly into the woods. Uh, We can go right now. (sighs) Question 11. What's her new tactic and what's yours? (laughs) I'm so tired. Okay, so she tried being mean. She hasn't tried my tactic. So, so, all right. I think we're both going to do this, and I have a reason for this, not just because I'm tired. I think I am going to go, okay, let's go. Let's go out the back door of this place because now I know that there's no longer protection for me under this institution. Mm-hmm. So I need to create my own escapes. Mm-hmm. So we are hand in hand going to agree to get out of here mm-hmm. because I think that that is the only way that I will be able to make a quote unquote run for it, either figuratively or literally. So I'm going to say like, okay, I'm sleepy. Let's go take a nap in the cabin. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Hand in hand. So you're both going to take a nap in the cabin. That's your answer? Our figurative (laughs) answer. Yes. I'll give you a ding. Okay. I I feel like getting out of the room is a good idea. Yeah. Like I just need to get out of the room. I mean, I felt safer that there was record of me. Right. Now that there's now not. You know, no one knows where the fuck you are. I have to get out of this physical building. Yeah. So she says, what if I say no? Okay. What if you let me go and we just start over and we go have drinks and we just get to know each other? Okay. And he says, I'd lose you. You know that. Yeah. Question You're 12. Right. What's your new tactic? And what's her new tactic? Um, Blow him? Just, you know, just um, a sort of disarming blowjob, if you will. A, you know, really set him back on his heels kind of blowjob. Uh, I don't know. I'm so tired. Um... No, I think she's going to come on to him, though, in all seriousness. I made that joke, but I think she's going to come on to him for sure. And I think I might, too. Uh, again, my tactics are all changing because I am not I'm no longer under the protection of this institution. So my only goal is to trick him into getting me out of this building. So that's what we're going to do. We're both going to use our feminine wiles. Um, I'll give you a ding again. Okay. I'm just giving you the benefit of the doubt because I don't know the I answer. I mean, yeah, like, things. what the fuck? She does do something interesting, though. I can't wait. She says, I don't know how to say this. Have you ever been with anyone else? Had sex with anyone else? Because, you know, the fantasy and the reality are two very different things. And Ain't she's that like, the truth? <laughs> she's like, I might not be what you want. It's true. And he's like, you're all I ever want. She's like, I really need you to see what you've been missing out there and then decide if you still want me. Oh, like I might be your last, but I can't be your first. Interesting. And he's like, no, 
no. And she's like, she's like, you would do this if you loved me. <laughs> you say nice things and all, but you know, love is like doing things for other people, even if you don't really want to. And she's like, do you love me? Nice, bitch. Then prove it. Go fuck other people. And he's like, how? And she says, well, you brought me down here. Bring someone else down here. What? Okay. And he says, you want me to kidnap somebody else? Fuck her in front of me. Uh, And he's uh, like, I can't do that. And she's like, well, (laughs) I guess, I guess, I guess you you are trying to bet on our future. I mean, if that's, if that's, you know, too much to ask. Wow. And he's like, so what do you just want me to bring like some random patient down here? And she's like, no. I want you to bring braids. <gasps> oh, cut to the pill line. Okay. Okay. Braids is taking a pill from Glasses Beard and goes to back to the ward. Um, he maybe puts like something extra in there or something. And he goes back to the ward and kind of like tries to wake her up and she's all just groggy. So he just like leads her along and is like, come with me. Cut to the police station. And they're like, oh, the prince from John Doe came back. Bonus question. Who is John Doe? It's the uh, actual guy that he says he is. Like the, the, it's the, it's the name on his, what am I saying? It's Stalker's name tag, dude. That's who it is. And his name is. I don't fucking <laughs> I'm just remember. kidding. I'll okay. give you a ding. Yeah. Uh, it's George Shaw. Oh, I got a ding? Okay, yeah. great. Uh, it's just weird. I'm so, I'm like Pavlov's dog where I'm like used to hearing the ding, but now I that know, we can't give it to you. Ding. It's all Rosie's fault. Blame the dogs, people. The ding is out. Yeah. So, only for this episode. Glasses Beard brings Braids down to the room. Mm-hmm. And as soon as she walks in, Braids is like, the fuck is that cunt doing in here (laughs) i kind of like braids so sawyer's like just act like i'm not here and then she says to glasses beard she's like i'm impressed so go ahead do it show me and glasses beard uh, just kind of like throws down braids and braids is like no 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 and Sawyer's like, shut her up, shut her up, shut her up. And so he's kind of like laying on top of her now. She's struggling and he like covers her mouth. Oh my God. And Sawyer's like, okay, stop, stop, stop. And then Sawyer gets on top of her and she's holding braids down and she gets all up in her face and she says, we all get lonely braids, <laughs> you know? You just, sometimes you push people away and no one's left. I don't think you wanted me to hate you. I think you wanted me to notice you. Oh, well, here I am. And she kisses her. <gasps> oh, shit. Question 13. What does she do next? And what do you do next? What does Claire do? Mm-hmm. Claire. Uh, Sawyer. Yeah. Um, so she's kissing her. Mm-hmm. But then she kind of like kisses around her neck and ear area and whispers in her ear, Help me, I'm being held captive. Mm -hmm. I had him bring you down here to save me. Help me. That's what she does. Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, flip that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. What she does is similar, except she starts touching her and finds the shiv that she has stashed on her and uh pulls it out and uh is now armed and has a shiv the end ding ding yay who got the ding her oh i don't know why you didn't do that too um i just felt like it was it would be better to enlist a second person i'm afraid of let's say braids is in column one oh oh she's real crazy she's crazy yeah yeah yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't regardless yeah you're both in captivity right, at right, this right, point right. yeah so uh 
she kisses her braids actually like kisses her back and she lifts up the side of her thing grabs the little metal shiv and stabs glasses beard in the throat yes braids gets up and starts banging on the door um or trying to like unlock the door and sawyer is like no fucking way move she grabs the keys she unlocks the door and gets out and closes the door and she turns and looks through the window and glasses beard grabs braids and stares up at her and breaks braids neck whoa but he was stabbed in the neck Uh uh-huh fuck or he was stabbed i think it was neck but whatever he was stabbed but he got it right up immediately and snaps her neck fuck sawyer now runs through the dark hallway i don't even know if i'd know how to snap someone's neck i mean he's a big dude yeah i I still feel like it requires more leverage like when i think about the anatomy of the human spine i feel like it's done a little bit too easily in movies or maybe i just don't know how to snap someone's neck i'd like to know how to snap someone's neck for defense purposes (laughs) no worries You'll be fine. Help me. <laughs> I'm being held captive. I mean, I'm fine. I'm being held captive. I mean, Kim, just don't fucking piss me off. I know. And you'll oh my be God, fine. Girl, we're best friends. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just help don't me, know please. why you're worried. Please, please, please help me. The only people whose necks get snapped are the ones that piss me off. So anyway, so I was running through the dark hallway and just keeps trying different doors and they're all locked and it's like running through one hallway and it's like all dark and then another that has some lights on and another that's all dark and she's just like running around and around and finally she's outside and it's like this tiny little parking lot and then the woods and like a big kind of water tank sort of thing okay i'm assuming it looks like that ish but it's ground level it's not one of those really tall guys right we're right so she runs up and hides behind it She's just like standing there, <sighs> catching her breath. She peeks back around towards the door. There's nothing there. She relaxes, leans back. Glasses <laughs> beard is behind her. He hits her over the head. Shit. Why doesn't this motherfucker die? Did he or did he not get stabbed in the fucking neck? But like with a t- it's it's a tiny, it basically looks like a tiny piece of foil. Ugh, okay. I don't think it was murder right stab murder stab okay you know <laughs> all the more reason to learn how to snap someone's neck i'm just saying <laughs> cut to paris hilton sex tape night vision <laughs> right right well we are a paris hilton podcast obviously we had to get back yeah. to this so it's straight night vision on sawyer kind of waking up and she's inside a trunk God, I don't want to be in a trunk right now. I know, dude. Uh, Cut to Glasses Beard driving. Cut back to Sawyer. So what we can assume is that she's in complete darkness. Uh Uh-huh. We're the only reason we're getting to see what she's doing is because of our Paris Hilton sex tape night vision. Sure, sure. But she starts feeling around and there's something kind of next to her and it seems like a black trash bag and she starts ripping it open and there's a body inside. Oh, come on. Who is it? It's Braids? The end? No. Who is it? It's her mom. It's her mom? Fuck my life. So it's like pitch black and she reaches in and she feels the body and kind of starts feeling around and she grabs the necklace and it's like this cross necklace that her God. mom has. And she just fucking starts to sob. Damn it. I don't want to be here anymore. You're I here. I asked for a nap you're a long here. time ago. Get it together, girl, because you're here. Okay. We cut back up to Glass's beard in the driver's seat. And she hear- he hears her scream from the trunk. Right. And he's like, hi, mom. Ah. Uh... What back to her, I know, feeling around. Somehow she gets the trunk open and like jumps out. Okay. Which is magical to me because I feel like even not in the dark, that always is the hardest part. But yeah. again, this is all from TV and movies anyway. I'm just well, like, you know, some trunks have like. Have a new thing now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, an escape hatch. I know. <laughs> Regardless, she gets the trunk open and like immediately jumps out. 
it like kind of rolls out. The car yeah. stops, but she starts running. And now it's kind of pre-night. Okay. So it's like that dusky blue kind of color oh, and like blue woods sort right, of. Right, right. Back to Nurse Balls. She's asleep in the break room and she hears a little ding ding text message. She looks at it, gets up and turns on the TV. King's picture is on the news. Uh-huh. And it's a woman saying that he was there to investigate. She's like, I never thought this would um, be his last story that he ever wrote for us. It's really tragic, et cetera, et cetera. Because they're going to know his death was bullshit because he wasn't really there for an opioid yeah, addiction. so he was telling the truth and he wasn't crazy. So King is going to save us after all, maybe. So Glass's beard is now running through the woods and he's just like, you're just delaying the inevitable, Sawyer. And cut back to cop cars with lights start to pull up to the facility. Mm -hmm. As they're walking in, admin lady is standing out front talking to news cameras, um, kind of defending shit or whatever. And the cops go in with her now and they're like, we have a warrant to search the premises. Yeah, you do. And she's like, I'm proud of the work we do here. People leave healthier. Blah. Blah is right. Back to Sawyer. Running through the woods. It's getting darker. She trips. She falls and kind of trips down a hill. She like grabs onto a tree so she can stop falling. And her nice leg bitch. is fucking busted. Fuck. Glass's beard catches up to her. No more running. No more lying. He says. He grabs her leg and hits it with a hammer. Ow! She fucking screams. My leg hurts. Exactly. That's what she says. God. Ow! <laughs> that hammer hurt my, my leg, leg, sir. Jeez. Back to cops looking around. They find braids dead right. in that room. Yeah. And they're like, this doesn't look right to me i don't think she's supposed to be here dead uh, right i don't think her neck hmm. is supposed to be snapped things are not adding up now we go back to glasses beard. i don't want to girl you're with him <sighs> okay this show man no my man is king dick <laughs> <laughs> but i want king dick <laughs> king dick is my man <laughs> You can have him. I want a nap. Thank you. <laughs> so Glass's beard is now carrying a passed out Sawyer. Okay. He kind of puts her down on the ground and stands over her yeah. and just stares down. And he's like, you look so beautiful right now. Oh, for fuck's sake. I feel like I'm looking at the real you. Ugh. So many things I wanted to say for, to you, but I froze up. But now it's different. It's just you and me. You'll learn to love me. And then he kneels down and he kind of starts like laying out her arms and legs. So she's like laying flat. And he's like, a year from now, maybe two. And he lays down next to her. Rosa! And caresses her face. Fuck. And he's like, I was thinking maybe we could start a family of our own. What do you think about that? little girl with your eyes and your smile uh, that would be perfect you'd make such an amazing mother and now the camera kind of goes to like the side of her and even though she's passed out or we think she's passed out she ends up reaching in her pocket grabs the keys and stabs him in the eye yay he holds his face and starts screaming question number 15 what does she do and what do you do Oh, I'm going to stab forever. Ketrin is going to stab forever. I'm going to fucking stab his other eye out. I'm going to stab him in the ear balls. I'm going to stab him in the dick. I'm going to fucking just rail at him. And then I'm going to find a rock and I'm going to beat his head in with it. And then I'm going to crawl away after I'm sure that he is pass the fuck out i'm also going to probably look for a phone on him so i can call nern rern rern mm -hmm. that's me um, oh, cr oh, cr um i think she that was a good one 
I think she gets a little rageful as well. Because uh, she already stabbed him in the eye, right? Right. I don't know. I don't know if she's a Sammy, so I don't know if she knows to stab forever. I think she stabs him in the eye and starts trying to crawl away. Oh, we can ding again. I'll give a point for you. Thank you. She gets on top of him, straddles him, and slits his throat with the keys. Oh, to All the point right. of the camera's just on her, and we just hear like gurgling and blood like spurts up at her. Nice. I don't know if I knew you could slit someone's throat with keys. Oh, you'd you have can. To, you'd have to be real mad. You you'd have to have, have some to real fucking really like adrenaline want strength to murder them. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Nice. Good job, girl. Thank you. Staying alive. Yeah. Cut to cop cars. Uh, so many cop cars now outside of the facility. Hello, it's nighttime. Oscar. We're looking at the admin's office desk and stuff, and they find that notebook from King. They start looking through it, and they put admin lady in handcuffs. <gasps> okay. Six months later. Sawyer and Jill are out eating lunch at a restaurant. Okay. And Jill's like, I can't believe we still have to eat here after your big promotion. She's like, you have an expense account. Live it up. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> That's true. I'm with Jill. And Sawyer's like, well, there is something serious. The company wants to thank you for your hard work, um, but it's time to move on. So clear your desk. What? A bitch is firing Jill? And Jill says, you're so many assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and Sawyer's like, yeah, and you're paying for lunch. And she's like, you just love playing your power games. And Sawyer's like, no, I just love being the boss of you. <laughs> um, I love Sawyer. And all of a sudden, she like stops and stares at a guy. And it's like a guy on the other side of the restaurant. And we just see the side of his face. And it kind of looks like glasses, glasses beard. beard. Glasses beard. Had but she's like staring at a guy. And Jill's like, oh, OK, I mean, like, could you be a little less obvious, please? Yeah. And we start to hear lightly, like a guy speaking, saying she's so beautiful, <gasps> and even my father loves her. Sawyer grabs the knife from her table. She gets up and starts walking down the little hallway towards the other table. And the guy is saying, she might be the one. She goes up and stands behind him with the knife. And he's saying, I think I might spend the rest of my life with this girl. And the camera's just on Sawyer, and it's like flashes of, of Glass's beard and her face, yeah. her face, Glass's beard. And then this guy turns his head. It's not him. Thank God. Okay. And she's just like, uh, 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 and she drops the knife. Bitch, you killed Glasses Beard. And she like runs out of the restaurant and it's just like shaky camera on her that's like following her. And she like turns back around, freeze fame on her face. Yeah. The end. Th Good night. <laughs> I'm asleep. Did you want to take a nap now? I do. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a nap while you count my points. I, I'm powering down. Do you need to process? I do. Do some processing? I do. I yeah. am going to go process. Goodbye. I'm going to count your points and then we'll talk. Okay. Bye. <laughs> hey guys, this is Kat. And Kim. And we just want to let you know about our brand new Patreon we just launched. You can find us at www.kimandcatstayalive.com. And you'll also find merch on there. Check out our merch store and follow us on social media at KK Sam Podcast. We love you. Bye. Okay. Oh, I'm awake. Okay. You have the possibility to get 36 points. Uh-huh. And you had five out of eight of your dead or alive, of course. Uh-huh. You got 15 and a half out of 28 for the questions. That's not great. But two bonus points. Oh. So your final score out of 36 points is 22 and a half. It's fine. It's more than 50%, so I'm alive. Yeah. Barely. But barely sane. Right. I mean, but we already knew that. We didn't need a quiz to tell <laughs> yeah, me that. We already knew you were unsane. Yeah. Uh, I have so many feelings about this. I know. Because... I have a lot of feelings. Okay. So here's why... I know I keep bringing it back to the show, but it's just like on the brain where like Legion, it's like you're schizophrenic. You're in a mental institution. No, you're not. You have special powers. Oh, wait, you have special powers, but you might also be schizophrenic. And that's kind of what this is reminding me of, uh -huh. where it's like, 
she could have been the victim of a horrible stalking murder situation. That doesn't exclude you from also being nuts. And that is terrifying to me. I think there were so many layers of terrifying yeah. in this for like, me. It's, I also just, the, I mean, mental institutions in like the 60s and 70s, I can't think of anything more terrifying. Yeah. Like the people in there just had like zero agency. I would like to think that maybe facilities like that are a little bit better. But at the same time, it's like, how do you give agency to people that have been proven to not be able to make decisions properly? It's just awful. It's just terrifying. It's just so scary. Yeah. Brain shit fucking flips me the fuck out. And I'm going to be thinking about this for several weeks. So fuck you. <laughs> this is. It also reminds me of this Buffy episode that I still lose sleep over where she keeps going in and out of the reality that we know, but she'll flash back to her in an institution where it's doctors saying like her mom is still alive her parents are still together. Uh -huh. She doesn't have a sister named Dawn. I'm giving spoilers. The fucking show went off the air in 2003. Go fuck yourself. Um, no one cares. Exactly. Uh, and they're going, what do you think is more realistic? That you're mentally compromised in, in an institution? Or that you're a vampire and demon slayer with special powers and uh -huh. you fight evil with your friends? Right. And even Buffy is like, Touche. Uh, touche, right? And so in the asylum reality, she chooses to go catatonic again to go be Buffy. Mm -hmm. But then also in the Buffy world, it's like, no, it was these it, it was these demons that made you think you were insane. But right. now it's like the literally uh, the entire rest of the show. Maybe. Like, is she? Yeah. No one knows. Yeah. So what I'm asking is, yes. am I in an institution? And this is the reality that I've concocted while I'm catatonic strapped to a bed. <laughs> and would um, you even know? I don't know. Because you're in this I'm reality just part with of me. Your reality, I guess. <sighs> I mean, I experience life outside of you, so Oh, that's good. That's good. Seems like a plus. But also are you just telling me that you experience for... life outside of my reality? I'm not. You really do. I really do. Can I've I trust got you? A whole life out there. Okay. So I think that's a plus in the the not, not crazy category in that column. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I'm um, glad I got. I'm glad I got that off my chest. Upsetting for me for all of those reasons because it's terrifying to be like I'm not crazy, and every time someone's telling you you're not crazy, it makes you sound more crazy. Yeah. I'm actually curious but, why this was so scary. It's obvious to me why it was scary for me, but you're like a very sane person. Well, that's infuriating. Yeah. To, feel like I would res have responded a lot of the same way she did where I'm just like uh, 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 what 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 right like you start to feel crazy feel crazy but like the stalker part of this was mm. very terrifying yeah and it's not something I think about either but like the way that it was done was very terrifying yeah like yes. it made me very scared like I started to like cry at certain what? points be with like his interaction mm. with her yeah it was very upsetting i mean i guess blessing the the one silver lining of this is like for whatever reason stalkers that idea isn't a thing that sparks fear in me it's not like i'm like bring on bring it on stalkers it's just like it doesn't occur to me that's not what my nightmare is me neither, but that's why I'm saying I think if you watch the movie, it would, maybe, it would be scary. I could maybe add to my Rolodex of yeah, nightmares. Sure, sure, cool. Sure. I'm always uh, looking to add to things to terrify me. So Great. the thing that when I looked up is this a horror movie. Oh, yeah. I saw something that said it's a horror movie for the hashtag Me Too movement. <gasps> so I had not watched it yet. And all I was looking up was to see if I should oh. watch it or not. And that's the only thing. And that came up like twice. And I was like. I, I'm gonna that sounds that's scary that's a horror movie that sounds scary yeah. I guess I'll watch yeah that's I mean a horror movie is anything that leaves people feeling horrified and scared exactly like that's 
you know, that's so, yeah. what it is. Wow. I mean, I think this got like a lot of backlash of people being like, oh, it was stupid. But like, I kind of liked that you were like, I'm not sure at first if, if, cause I didn't know. I, I was like, it. I didn't know if she was crazy or not for the right. longest fucking time. And then it turns out she wasn't. But then even at the end, she has You're like, like PTSD. Yeah. Or she just has PTSD from being fucking stalked. Right. Because also, it's fucking terrifying. Please know Kim and I are both in therapy. I struggle with mental illness. I am not trying to be derogatory when I say crazy or insane or whatever. Oh, That's yeah. just a shorthand that we are using and we are absolutely not trying to offend Oh my gosh! Anyone, yeah. no. just so we're clear, that is our shorthand <laughs> talking to each other. Big mental health people. Right. We're like, get yeah. it, and we're both fucking nuts. So we're both you insane. Know. <laughs> we are definitely insane. Yes, uh, that was great, Bernsey. Yeah, I found it scary. Thank you. You're welcome for terrifying me. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Thanks. Um, I guess this has been Kim and Kat's Stay Alive. Maybe. Maybe. We're going to go take a nap. Yeah. Good night. So Bye. Until next week. Stay alive. Please stay alive. We'll see you Monday. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Put a ghost in me. I'm, I'm done. done. <laughs>